Bina and yes, thank you. And welcome one more time to everyone to Digital Communicators first contest. I will be the Toastmaster of the evening. My name is Elena and I'm very, very happy to be with you. I'm confident that it will be a great contest because we have some amazing speakers that are ready to make us laugh and we are ready, I hope, to have fun. I won't take much of your time and I will go straight to our uh, presiding officer, Nick, tonight that would like to also have a couple of words of welcome to you. Thank you very much, Elena. Welcome to Digital Communicators. We have a contest today that's gonna to blow your socks off. Very happy that you're here today. I'm really excited. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait. One thing I will say is that I'm gonna put the agenda into the chat for everybody for ease so that you know who, who are the speakers. And more than anything, just enjoy yourself. You will be able to chat to the administrators, myself and Audrey, and uh, if you have any issues. So please use the chat function to contact the producers, Audrey and myself on the other computer, all right? Now I'd like to welcome our wonderful Toastmaster of the day, who's gonna be the hub of all the excitement. Please give it up for our very good friend, Toastmaster Elena Serafimova. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nick. It is a pleasure to be here and join your club, Digital Communicators. That is a sister club and very dear to me. I will not uh, waste any more time and we'll go straight to our contest chair tonight, which is Pam Rowley. Pam Rowley is a president of Ditsbury Communicators. She's a wonderful, wonderful person and I'm sure she'll do an amazing job. So please everyone warm welcome for Pam Rowley. Thank you, Alina. Mr. President, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. On behalf of Digital Communicators, as the contest chair, it's my honor, my pleasure, and privilege to welcome you to this event. Tonight, we have four prepared humorous speeches for you and four Table Topics contestants. For the first part of the evening, we're going to hear the prepared speeches. The contestants have been briefed and know the timings for the speeches. For the speeches, the green card will be, be displayed at five minutes, the amber at six, and the red at seven. Any speeches under four and a half minutes or over seven and a half minutes will automatically be disqualified. Can I just check with the chief judge, have all the judges, timekeepers and contestants been briefed and counters been briefed? Has everyone been briefed, Mehul? Yes. Thank All you. the judges, uh, timers and counters are briefed. That's fabulous, thank you. Any protests concerning eligibility or originality can only be made to judges or contestants could, and must be lodged with the contest chair or the chief judge before the results are announced. I'm gonna ask that everyone in the audience, except for the timer, turns their cameras off and mutes themselves. There'll be a one minute silence after each speech for judges to do their scoring. The contestants will speak in the following order. One, Deck Klusky. Second, Pamela Benjamin. Third, Rinku Saha. And fourth, Kavita Dulai. Let me welcome our first speaker to the stage. Deck, can you hear me? Can you see the timer? And are you ready to proceed? We can't hear you, Deck. You know, everybody says that to me, wait for about 10 seconds. <laughs> We've got you now. Oh, that's Are you lovely. ready to proceed? Can you see the timer? Just enough, just enough, just enough, right now. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. That's weird. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, I can. Yeah, I can. Yeah. See the timer. Are you ready to proceed? Yeah, okay. Lovely. Please welcome Deck Klusky with a speech entitled Cabernet Sauvignon, with a speech entitled Cabernet Sauvignon, please welcome Deck Kluski.
Cabernet, Sauvignon. Ah. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and very, very welcome guests. Have you ever felt tense? Have you ever felt nervous? Do you ever feel that everybody is having a wonderful time except you? Did you join Toastmasters to get more confidence? If you answered yes to any of these questions, I want you to go to your local co-op and just ask for the most wonderful, new, tremendous, exciting, fantastic medication just been released. Cabernet Sauvignon or Cabernet Sauvignon, as some people say. Cabernet Sauvignon is the easy, natural way to feel better and more confident. It let you be yourself. You'll be ready. You are ready. You are now the new and more powerful you. I take it regularly, by the way. I fall down a lot. I don't drink that much, really. I spill a lot. My tongue and my teeth get terribly red. Now, either that's a tongue twister or great alliteration. Make up your own mind. You can, within minutes of taking this wonder medication, feel younger. Men feel more virile. Ladies feel more alluring. Men and women get a warm feeling, a glow of serene, sensuous sophistication. Fonderwell Nelwes. Fonderwell Nel, Wonderwall, Wonderwall Oasis, Wonderwall Wonderful wellness. You discover many talents that you didn't know you have. For instance, you can go into any snooker hall, you can push the snooker player out of the way, you can take his cue, you can take his shot. A little downfall for that. You could end up in an ambulance going to accident and emergency. Ladies! You can get that wonderful feeling, you can go into the ladies' room. Pretty girl, you can take her lipstick, put it all over your lips, over your cheeks, whatever you want. Again, downfall of that, ambulance, to accident, and emergency. Mind you, red and blue lights can be very nice. Sirens can be a bit annoying. And if you don't like fast travel, this is definitely not for you. So, stop sniveling and start living! Cabernet Sauvignon! Cabernet Sauvignon! May not be right for everyone. For instance, ladies who are pregnant shouldn't go near it, really, or ladies that are nursing shouldn't go near it. But however, ladies, that fancy being pregnant or fancy nursing, give it a shot. Side effects. They may include for men, droopiness, drawliness, drowsiness, projectile vomiting, imprisonment, loss of balance, loss of shirt, loss of wallet, loss of teeth. Loss of virginity for men and for women. A belief that you are God and a desire to sing loudly and to play naked twister with total strangers. Some who have taken it too much, they've complained that people's faces slip about of it. They wake up 
in strange beds, quite a distance from their own homes. They lose their car keys in a poker game with a 10 year old. Now, the contraindications or contraindicaciones, as they say if you're drinking Spanish. The consumption of Cabernet Sauvignon may make me feel that you are speaking very quietly, when in fact you are shouting quite loudly. The consumption of Cabernet Sauvignon may cause you to tell a police person over and over, I think I love you. The consumption of Cabernet Sauvignon may make me feel that you can walk on water. But the main benefit of uh, this wonder medication is it's available everywhere, every street, every village, every town, in every country, and it's very, very affordable. Oh, I forgot. Totally forgot. It can make you an alcoholic. Cause the whole family to fall apart. It can take over your life. Lose your job, wreck your finances, wreck your health, wreck your family, and create a life of misery for all those around you. The alcoholism can gradually creep up on you. Or it can switch on like a, like a light switch. You'll have no control over it. It's permanent, pernicious, persistent disease. There's no known cure. Yes. The ever, the ever efforts to control it will nearly kill you. So it can be a wonder drug, but it can give you an untimely death and a lonely funeral. So contest chair, this has been a humorous speech, but this subject is definitely not funny. Thank you, Deck. We'll now have one minute silence while the judges complete the ballots. If the timer could put one minute on the clock, please. That's one minute. Thank you, Hilary. Please welcome our second speaker, Pamela Benjamin. Pamela, can you hear me? Can you see the timer? And are you ready to proceed? I am, thank you. Thank you. Please welcome Pamela Benjamin with a speech entitled, The Two Sisters. With a speech entitled, The Two Sisters, please welcome Pamela Benjamin. Good afternoon, good evening, digital communicators, friends, and guests. I'm going to tell you a story of two sisters. This story began six years ago when I got a text from their mother. Could you please come to my house and tutor my two girls? I had just started tutoring and I had a few students that I had worked one with. One was a whore and another one was wonderful. I didn't know what, would, what, what waited for me on the other side of their front door. I'm gonna tell you a little snapshot of my journey with the two sisters. You see, they were quite unique. Unique is an understatement. 
One was an artist. She cared about everything beautiful and everything creative. Her head was in the clouds and her mind was always thinking about her next painting, about her next drawing. And oh, Asian boy bands. Yes, Asian boy bands. I became quite the expert at Asian boy bands because as we worked on math, we would listen to the latest tunes of the Asian boy bands. And I started to like them as well. It became part of my running set, my play set. And I never ever thought I would listen to something like that. Well, that was sister number two. She's the oldest sister. And in her language, her nickname was Akka. Akka means big sister. And she had responsibility to lead younger sister. Younger sister is named Chinari, which means little girl. Akka and Chinari were quite the duo. Where Akka had her mind in the clouds, was always thinking of how to be kind and loving and joyful. Chinari had different plans. You see, my friends, Chinari was very, very clever. She really thought about everything all of the time. When her mother asked me, what do you think Chinari should do when she grows up? I said, maybe world domination. If that doesn't work, maybe she can become a ruler or dictator in a third world, in a third world part of the country, of the world. Her mom didn't think that was funny, but Chinari was always scheming, always thinking. She was a clever girl. So while I would listen to the Asian boy bands with Akka, when I sat and worked with Chinari, I would always listen to tales of woe, what had just happened at school. Miss Pam, did you know that so-and-so said this to me, and then they said that to this person, and then this person said this to me, and then that person said this to me? Dear friends, I try to stay on top of things, but I could never figure out what Chinari was talking about. And it was very well organized. Something was going on, and she was on top of it. Well, we spent a couple years of that, and I became very close with all of these. As I work with Akka on her math, her math improved. As I worked with Chinari, she also got better at math. We would play games with division mostly. And when we were doing long division, she wanted me to put the biggest divisor and the biggest quotient in there. And then as I was winning, she would lay on my arm so that I could not write. And then she declared bragging rights to her, all her friends that she knew. I beat her. I beat her. I beat her. And so it was. The artist and the little girl that wanted to dominate and rule everyone she ever met. Now, during this process, there was also clashes. I mean, bickering, but it was bickering on a whole nother level. Miss Pam, do you know how stupid she is? Well, I kind of like your sister. Well, you really don't know. No, I think I do know. I tutor her. The other one would say, Miss Pam, do you realize how cruel and mean little sister is? I said, yes, I think I do. But there was one day, one day that there was a massive, massive confrontation. You see, father had bought art supplies. He had bought one set for little girl, for a little sister little girl. He had bought one to the older. And they were two separate worlds, and those worlds were never going to combine. But one day, one day, Chinari, little girl, decided to test boundaries again. While we were doing math and listening to Asian boy bands, Chinari went over to Big Sister's art supply. She picked up one of the pens, and she ran out of the room. Dear friends, that might have been a discussion in some homes. 
But in this home, it was boom. Give me back my pen. Was said into my ear. The vibe, the the molecules in my brain vibrated. I think for two hours after that confrontation. After each confrontation, I said to the girls, "Love each other. Love each other." Life will get hard. And there was responses were, Miss Pam, you don't know. And I said, love each other. Life will get hard. Dear friends, I went to Chinari's, our engagement or dance recital a week ago. The two girls lost their father. I learned about that while Chinari danced her heart out. And she was absolutely incredible. I watched older sisters stand up and speak about Chinari and how, wonder she, how wonderful she was. And my dreams came true that they loved each other in the midst of incredible pain. Dear friends, love your sisters and brothers. Life is short. Thank you, Pamela. We'll now have one minute silence while the judges complete their ballots. If the timer could put one minute on the clock, please. That's one minute. Thank you, Hilary. Please welcome our third speaker, Rinku Saha. Rinku, can you hear me? Can you see the timer? And are you ready to proceed? Good evening, yes. I can see you and I can see the timer on my screen. Am Fabulous. I open? You certainly are. Please welcome Rinku Saha with a speech entitled Imperfect Toastmaster. With a speech entitled Imperfect Toastmaster, please welcome Rinku Saha. Augustine Buro said, imperfections are attractive when the owner are happy with them. Fellow Toastmaster, lovely guests and distinguished judges, the irony is at home, no one listened to me. At work, same story. When I hang out with my friends, even if I open my mouth to yawn, let a wrinkle, let's order some food and drinks. I was desperately looking for a community. Who would have just listened to me? I found out Toastmasters International. I heard its member not only would listen to me, they will give me rewards. It sounded like a good salary package with confirmed bonus. Am I crazy to miss this opportunity? Of course not. I joined Toastmasters International and attended my first meeting. Topic master welcomed me at the center of the stage. A topic flashed on the screen. Would you take a pill to make more beauty? And the side effect is 25% hair loss. I was like, really? 
you chose this beauty to talk on that topic where so many of your club members badly need that pill. Anyway, I started my first impromptu speech. I spoke about everything or anything on this earth. Everybody enjoyed, they were laughing. The irony is I didn't speak anything related to the topic. It took me a week to regain my confidence to attend next Toastmaster meeting. During the meeting, a handsome Toastmaster approached me. Hey, are you a Toastmaster? Yes, of course. You evaluate him because his assigned evaluator will not be able to attend the meeting today. I evaluate him. But how? I looked at my right, I looked at my left, and I found a young girl. Are you a guest? I'm a club member. Uh, uh, could you please uh, assist me how to evaluate someone? Oh, it's very easy. Just remember four things an opening, a body, and a conclusion, and leave a room for area of improvement. That's it. Very easy. I kept on memorizing those four points and observed the speaker very closely from top to bottom. Believe me, I never ever checked out a man for that long seven minutes. My name was announced for evaluation. I started. Good evening, Mr. Toastmaster. Your opening, your face is round shape. Your haircut suits you. But my recommendation, if you can just trim a little bit, maybe half inches, you will look handsome. Coming to your body. As for your height, you look okay, but you really need to work on your tummy and love handles. Don't worry. Every morning, take a warm glass of water and squeeze a whole lemon. Drink it. Believe me, within one month of time, your tummy will go flat and love handle will disappear. Before I go to the conclusion part, stop, Rinko, stop. You are supposed to evaluate his speech. Evaluate his speech? I wanted the ground to open up and swallow me. My first role as a Toastmaster of the day on International Women's Day, I was perfectly dressed, wearing purple jacket, purple dress, purple lipstick, purple necklace. I was looking piping hot. Oops, uh, I was looking smart and professional. But I never learned about my script. President welcomed me on stage. And I took a never ending pause, confused. He had no choice other than taking over the stage. And I was standing next to him, distributing purple balloons to the member. Ladies and gentlemen, today, I have shared my perfectly imperfect Toastmaster stories. I affirm that I'm not a perfect person, not a perfect human being, and I am an imperfect Toastmaster. So what?
my imperfections do not stop me to learn, to grow, to serve my purpose. I have learned when we embrace our imperfections, we live to the fullest. A message from an imperfect Toastmaster, your flaws are what make you unique. Embrace them. Contest share. Thank you, Rinku. We'll now have a one minute silence for the judges to complete the ballots. At the time, I could put one minute on the clock, please. That's one minute. Thank you, Hilary. Please welcome our fourth speaker, Kavita Dulai. Kavita, can you hear me? Can you see the timer and are you ready to proceed? I can see the timer and I'm ready to proceed. Fabulous. Please welcome Kavita Dulai with a speech entitled, Why Don't You Eat Something? With a speech entitled, Why Don't You Eat Something? Please welcome Kavita Dulai. Isn't it amazing how in Toastmasters, the cultures have fused? Just look around you behind those screens. You will see people from all over the world. You'll see them from Nigeria, America and Mauritius. But outside the Toastmasters world, it's not always like that, is it? Step into my world. When I was growing up, I felt I was in two worlds, one foot in the East, in India, and one foot in the West, in the UK, where I am right now. You might think it was simple, a difference between yoga and the gym, or a difference between love, brown eyes meets blue eyes. Or you might think it was a clash of cultures, love marriages versus arranged marriages. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, in my family, it was simple. The cultural clash was all about food. The question was, shall we eat spicy or shall we eat bland tonight? The problem was, I didn't like spicy food. All our food came spiced up. It had cumin, chilies, coriander, and I liked potatoes, pies, and peas. This flaw in my taste bud was the bane of my mum's life and my life. And I would ask my mum, why is all this food spiced up? She would say, Beda, I'm trying to make this food tasty for you. All this garlic, ginger, turmeric. Besides, it's healthy. Chips were never served as chips with a sprinkle of salt. They came with chili flakes. Even the good old baked beans were smothered with garlic, ginger, and turmeric. That wonderful tomatoey taste decimated and destroyed. And even the cheese toasty, my favorite, had Bombay potatoes sneaked in between the cheese. 
and the Brits. How could they have produced a child like myself who preferred simple, plain English food over one of the finest cuisines in the world? And I complained bitterly. Not only was there so much food there, but my mum cooked and cooked and cooked. Our fridge was full of the Indian necessities. You would find dal, rice and curry, but there was no pies, no potatoes, no peas. My mum cooked so much that the fridge was bursting with food to the point I could barely shut the fridge door. And then I would ask my mum, why have you cooked all this food? And who is this food for? And the answer was always the same. Beta, I have cooked so much food in case somebody just passes by. Besides, why don't you eat something? Growing up in the UK, it was just so confusing, the cultures. My parents didn't quite know who to invite, who not to invite. Back in India, it was a culture of invite all. So I remember when I was growing up, all those invites that went a little bit wrong. One day, my, ma my dad invited the tax man. He said, we have got so much food on the table. Why don't you eat something? Of course, the tax man never came, but the tax inspector did. To this day, I think my dad regrets that invitation. And also, at a parents' evening, my dad and my mum invited the school teacher. But this was the dumb thing back in India. It was the way of showing respect and appreciation for the teacher who taught their children. That year, the teacher politely declined, but I did get a grade A. Not bad for someone who's new to the UK. And then another time, I remember this so well. Two lovely ladies showed up at our door in flowery skirts and boots. And they knocked on the door and they said, can we tell you about our religion? And my mum was absolutely delighted because we had passerbys, just like in India, people just popping by. And then she said, why don't you eat something? That summer, they were fed and watered all summer long. There was dal, there was curry, there was chicken. And be be between all the mouthfuls of food, I don't think they got a word out about religion but I do believe they gained a pound or two and they never ever came back. This journey of fusion of two cultures has been a long, long journey, but well, well worth the destination. So now I enjoy both Hollywood and Bollywood. And yes, you know those curried beans? They are now sold in a can. You can go and find them in the supermarket shelf. And I think that was my mum's grand plan when she came to the UK. And yes, my fridge is too full. It's bursting with food, with dal, chili and coriander and rice. And we have an important addition. We have pies, potatoes and peas. So you are most welcome to our dinner table. Why don't you eat something? Thank you, Kavita. We'll now have one minute silence for the judges to complete the ballots. At the time I could put one minute on the clock, please. Madam Contest Chair, all the judges are out of the room. You may proceed. Thank you. 
if everyone would like to open their cameras and maybe their mics and give a big round of applause to all our contestants. Well done, everyone. That concludes the first part of our evening. I'm just going to hand you back to our Toastmaster of the day, Elena. Thank you so much, Pam. Yes, I'm so glad to see some of you joining us uh, in person. I mean, uh, turning in your cameras. We will have a short 10 minute break for the next 10 minutes. So the competition will continue at 731. And until then, again, you are more than welcome to turn off your cameras and chat with me for a bit. I would like to see how you guys are feeling after the first competition, starting with a couple of guests that I was chatting in before. So Nikki, I know that this is your first competition that you uh, checked in uh, Digital Communicators. What do you think about tonight? Yeah, it's great. Thank you very much for having me. It's different. I've only done one competition with uh, Hall Speakers that I've been a member of. Um, and it's really fascinating to see how you do things differently. Um, I don't think at Hull they turn their cameras off. So that was really interesting. I've seen that spoken about on Facebook. So I guess as a speaker, that must be, it, it must make it feel very different. So I'm really enjoying it. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Nikki. Well, let's check in with one of the speakers. I can see Jack here. How do you feel without the audience or cameras turned off? Makes absolutely no difference to me. <laughs> All right. Because I've spent a whole career, you know, you, you, you have to pre-record and pretend there's an audience there. It's as simple as that. And then they just slot that pre-recorded video into the main show where there is a, an audience. So. Uh, I, in actual fact, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I love the challenge. It's, it's great. But um, I'm lucky that the audience, lack of audience doesn't really matter. No, I guess so. What about you, Rinko? What do you feel about not having an audience or is it uh, also quite normal? Uh, thank you, Elena, and hello, everyone. Uh, since I joined Toastmasters International last year, I never uh, participated in contest in person. So it has been always virtually, always online. So for me, uh, I'm really in comfort zone, virtually competing with others. I don't know what I will do in person, honestly. So it's absolutely fine. Yeah, I understand completely. I don't think that I've ever been to a competition in person and most of them have been online. And again, everyone has been turned off their cameras and it's definitely different because you can't really do that in person. I think it would be more challenging. I think uh, feeling all those people and their eyes on you could definitely be a little bit more frustrating. Uh, what do you think about that, Pamela? Have you been to a real competition in person? I have. I have competed a couple times in my local area here in Dallas, Texas. I have won a couple competitions. My home club that I started with with Toastmaster was quite competitive. We would our competitions had probably 10 competitors and people were just really, really zealous about everything. So it was really, really fun. And I feel like if if I could just get past the jitters. And back then, I could really give a good speech. And once I transitioned to online, it was a bit quirky, a bit challenging. But because of COVID, it really helped us all get so much better at being online and getting used to smiling on the camera and interacting with people on uh, it, it, online and then on other parts in other parts of the world and I think that's what I really really enjoyed more than anything so I was used to the interaction with people when I spoke I would see their eyes and sometimes if you're speaking about a serious subject you don't get any reaction it's kind of deadpan so I having everything off it's a bit of a challenge but I've gotten used to it it's been a couple it's been a couple speech contests that I've done that I've had every there's everything's been off 
I understand. Yeah, completely. And I think it's most challenging exactly when you're trying to send an emotion, whether it's humoristic in this uh, competition per se, and you expect people to laugh. So you're not sure if it's, you're hitting a wall or it's actually working. I mean, that probably is uh, the biggest challenge. How about you, Kavita? Have you been in competitions in person before? Yeah, I've done both. Um... And you know, I've learned to enjoy both as well, and I enjoy the differences. So, um, and I think it's I like both to be honest, but I, li I like the real sort of uh competitions because I like the energy you can actually feel the energy in the room, you can actually feel if people are with you or not with you, and you can change your direction a little bit. So, you can't do that online, you've got to sort of pretend the energy is there, and you've got to generate that energy from within. So, in a way. At the end of it, I probably will have become a better speaker because I've learned both techniques. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I agree. Yeah, definitely. I think we are getting up um, very, very useful skills for the future. The future is digital, whether we want it or not. Not necessarily in the same COVID conditions, but for sure, we are probably most of us all day on a laptop and then uh, after work as well, and then the TV screen and uh, phone screen. So definitely we are all online. All right, so let's uh, talk a little bit with Mar. How are you, Mar? You will be competing today in the next session. That's right, Elena. So I'm just ready. Well, I hope I am. <laughs> and after, you know, watching these amazing uh, humorous speeches, let's see what will come in the next section. Absolutely. It will be challenging. This is, I, I actually look forward to the table topics. For me, they're even a bigger challenge because you don't know what you're going to talk about. So it could basically be anything. <laughs> Uh, which, uh, I mean, compared to a prepared speech, you don't know, I don't know, you need to be very good improvising and making sure you're putting on some humor in it, specifically for the humoristic contest. So that's definitely another, another challenge that uh, all of the competitors for the next part have. But yeah, uh, yeah. we do, we do have that challenge. <laughs> we'll see. Sure. And I saw that, that Pam joined us. How are you feeling, Pam? I think that uh, I'm good. Thank good you. Wonderful, wonderful. I did make a small mistake that I would like to correct when I was presenting you. So uh, Pam is not a president of this very communicators, but this very speakers. A lovely, lovely club. And I truly apologize. I think there were way too many communicators tonight. And uh, it just uh, slipped my uh, slipped through my tongue. But uh, definitely that was, that was on me. Uh, That's I think not, a not a problem. <laughs> yes. But otherwise, I think the competition is uh, pretty much going pretty well. And we are almost on time, even though we had a little bit of a um, delay afterwards. I hope that our judges are working hard at gathering those votes so that we are uh, collecting them and we probably soon will know who's the winner. I really am uh, looking forward to that and see who will present to the next stage of uh, this area competitions, which is quite exciting, I think, for, for anyone that's competing tonight. Um, so I don't think that um, anyone else has uh, has uh, would like to join us in the conversation today uh, in the warm up session. People are doing what they need to do in a comfort uh, session. So hopefully they finish their business and they'll soon be back with us before the competition starts. Uh, we can see, all right, the judges are being uh, pulled back into the room, which is the signal that we are probably almost ready to go. Um, I will, we are actually pretty much on time on the end of the break. So let's wait a couple of seconds to see uh, everyone is in. And when I got the signal that we are all ready to start, I think that we should be, we should be all on time. Yes. I'm thinking any minute now. 
and uh, we should be all in the room and ready to start. You, you are still welcome to keep your uh, cameras on for the next one minute or keep them shut for a little while. Minus the judges, ma'am. All right, thank you, that's perfect. So if all judges are here and we are ready to go, I think it's now time to give the word back to our contest chair tonight so that she can introduce the table topic contest. Let's give a round of applause for Pam Rowley. Thank you, Alina. Welcome back to our table topics contest. We have four contestants competing tonight and I wish you all the best of luck. Can I just check with the chief judge, have all the judges, timekeepers and counters been briefed? We're just waiting to get word from our chief judge. And I'll just tell you in the meantime that any protest concerning eligibility or originality can only be made by judges or contestants and must be lodged with the contest chair or the chief judge before the results are announced. Are you with us, Mehul? We'll just have a slight pause while we wait for our chief judge to get back into the room. It's a long walk between those corridors. I think he's turned the wrong way and gone. He's gone to the bar instead. He should be back with us anytime. We'll have to start a chant for him in a minute. Because I also need him to pick the envelopes for the table topics. <laughs> There's the chant started. <laughs> I want to know what the judges have done to our chief judge. Was it that bad in the breakout room? You don't want to know, ma'am. Oh, dear. <laughs> I, I fear for him. Hello, Nick. We've lost our chief judge. Yes, whenever you're ready. I don't know what the, when the break started, but um, we are ready. We have. We've started back. We're just waiting for our chief judge. I just want to check with him that everyone's been briefed. Hello, Mehul. Can I just check that all the judges, timekeepers and counters have been briefed? Yes, judges, timekeeper and uh, counters are briefed. Lovely. Can I ask you to select an envelope A, B or C for the table topics question? Go for C. C? Okay. So tonight, as I said earlier, we have four table topics contestants tonight. The contestants will speak in the following order. First, we will have Mark Cano. Second, Pamela Benjamin. Third, Andrew Bennett. And fourth, Deck Plusky. Can I also check that all the contestants, apart from Ma, are now out of the room? I'll just no, I'm still the, here. Uh, you just need to uh, just introduce the contest, and then whenever you're ready, I'll move them. Okay. I have introduced it, but I'll do that again. So we're starting our table topics contest. We have the four contestants keep competing tonight. We've checked that oh, any protests. Sorry, sorry. Uh, let me just recreate. Sorry, go carry on. Okay, so we have checked that any protests concerning eligibility or originality needs to be made, can only be made by judges or contestants, and must be lodged with either myself or the chief judge before the results are announced. We've selected envelope C. So once the table topics contestants are out of the room, we're ready to proceed with our first contestant, Mark. Okay, so. We're going to leave Mar in the room. The others are opening up uh, into the other room. Okay. 
We're just waiting for one more contestant to move. Okay, uh, they are out of the room. You may proceed. Thank you, Nick. I think everyone has got their camera off, but can I just please make sure that everyone in the audience, except for the timer, has their cameras off and have muted themselves. After each speaker, there will be a one minute silence for the judges to do their scoring. So please welcome our first speaker tonight. Our first speaker is Mark Hanno. Mark, can you see and have you pinned the timer and are you ready to proceed? I can see you and I can see the timer. Fabulous, thank you, Ma. Mark Hanno, if you could hang out with a cartoon character, who would it be and why? If you could hang out with a cartoon character, who would it be and why? Mark Hanno. What? If I could be a cartoon character? Come on, have you ever asked yourself the question? A cartoon character. I was thinking of, oh uh, no, not that one. Maybe, <gasps> no, not that one. Wait one. Yes, I've got it. A cartoon character I could see myself in. Dun, 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 dun. Do -do 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 -do. Have you guessed which cartoon character could it be? Yes, the Red Panther. Oh, I mean, the Pink Panther. Why not? And I'm going to tell you why. When I was a little child, well, maybe little, very even little than that and shorter, I loved I really love having a very, very nice, sweet uh, sort of cake that I had after school. I remember that moment. Ah, oh, mm, mm, delicious. Have you had that feeling of that cake, pink cake, the panther, pink panther cake melting into your mouth? After a long day at a school, I had that feeling. And I remember it as if it was yesterday. And I can tell you I'm old enough to say that it was not yesterday. So if I had to choose a cartoon character, why not the pink or red panther? Du -dun, du -dun, du -dun. Contest chair. Thank you, Ma. We'll now have a one minute silence to allow the judges to complete the ballots. If the timer could put one minute on the clock, please. That's one minute. Thank you, Hilary. Our next speaker is Pamela Benjamin. Pamela, can you hear me? Can you see the timer? And are you ready to proceed? I can hear you. I can see the timer. Just let me pin her just a minute. She is pinned. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela Benjamin. If you could hang out with a cartoon character, 
who would it be and why? If you could hang out with a cartoon character, who would it be and why? Pamela Benjamin. If I could hang out with a cartoon character, who would it be? Ladies and gentlemen, my favorite cartoon character was Speed Racer. Speed Racer, Trixie and their little monkey. We watched that program, my, my brothers, my sister and I, we watched that over and over again. And Speed Racer was always looking for his mysterious brother who disappeared. And he and Trixie went on so many adventures. But the best part of, the best part was, they always beat the bad guy. Yep, if I could be in a cartoon, I would be Trixie and I would be in the car with Speed Racer going on adventure after adventure and going after the bad guy and looking for big brother Rex. The mysterious part about it was Rex was always in the background taking care of Speed Racer and Trixie. So not only did you get to go on wonderful adventures, but you got really, really cool outfits and you got a pet monkey and Rex the brother was taking care of you. So how much more fun can that get? Thank you, Pamela. Again, we'll have one minute on the clock for the judges to complete their ballot. If we could have one minute on the clock, please. That's one minute. Thank you, Hilary. Our next speaker is Andrew Bennett. Andrew, can you hear me? Can you see the timer? And are you ready to proceed? Thank you, Contest Chair. I can see the timer and I'm ready. Lovely. Andrew Bennett, if you could hang out with a cartoon character, who would it be and why? If you could hang out with a cartoon character, who would it be and why? Andrew Bennett. Have you seen the pinky and the brain? The pinky and the brain. One is a genius, the other is insane. But I'd have to choose between the two of them. So of these two laboratory mice, which one would I choose? Would I choose the genius or the one who's insane? Who's the more fun? Well, Norman the Great Brains, he's a bit of a serious character in many ways, and he's not too pleasant. So I guess I would go for Pinky. Now, Pinky may be a very silly sort of a mouse, a very silly sort of a mouse indeed, but Pinky has a heart. Pinky gets everything wrong all the time, but he picks himself up, dusts himself off, and starts all over again the next episode. Pinky has been known to shed a tear, and I like that emotional touch in a character. I think you could have a lot of fun staying and hanging out with Pinky the Mouse. However, there's one thing about him that I really wouldn't cope with for very long, and that's his <laughs> laugh. Pinky's laugh is very annoying. But as a character, yeah, he's fun. He gets things wrong, he's a bit silly sometimes, and he drives Norman, his pal mouse, who's the brain, up the wall. But he'd be more fun than Norman, I think, because Norman has got plans to take over the world. Who would you choose if you could choose, Toastmasters, between two laboratory mice, Pinky or the Brain? Which one would you go for? The serious one or the one with the silly laugh, but who's good company? I think I'd go for Pinky every time, don't you? 
contest chair. Thank you, Andrew. We'll now have one minute silence while the judges complete the ballots. If the timer could put one minute on the clock. I'm unmuted now, uh, Pam, I don't know who they are. can you hear me? Letting, the judges are just completing their ballots, we won't yeah. be long. Yeah. I might take my glasses off. That's one minute. Thank you, Hilary. So our next speaker is Deck Klusky. Deck, can you hear me? Can you see the timer? And are you ready to proceed? That's right, I've got everything off the screen now. Yeah, I should be right now. Okay. I'm ready to proceed. Yeah. Deck Klusky, if you could hang out with a cartoon character, who would it be and why? If you could hang out with a cartoon character, who would it be and why? Deck Klusky. Hello, Top Decks Chair, Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, very welcome. Yes, an interesting question, a great question, a fantastic question, and right up my street, because I don't know one cartoon character. I don't want to be Mickey Mouse. I remember Mickey Mouse. I don't want to be Goofy. I remember Goofy. I'll tell you what. If there was a rhinoceros cartoon character, I'm sure there is. That's the one I would like to be, a rhinoceros character, because big and bold, big horn, everybody terrified of you, making a lot of noise, tromping around. Hey, baby, I'm a rhinoceros. You're only a lion. Hey, baby, I'm a rhinoceros. You're only a tiger. Hey, baby. I'm a rhinoceros. You're an, 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 an elephant. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think rhinoceroses have a wonderful time. I do feel the amount of food they can eat is wonderful because I love food, the taste. But then again, you'd have to argue that they really have a very, very bad diet. Good in one sense, lots of fiber, but no protein. They don't like protein. They don't like oysters. They don't like lobster. They don't like scallops, which is everything I like. So, yes, I think I would like to be a rhinoceros. And I would advise you to please consider being a rhinoceros, a rhinoceros, but be a rhinoceros with a taste for wonderful food. Madam Contest Chair. Thank you, Deck. Timer, if we could have one minute on the clock while the judges complete their ballots. Madam Contest Chair, all judges are out of the room. Thank you. you. Thank you. So I'm going to have a little chat with all our contestants.
So as Dex cameras on first, Dex, can we have a little chat? Of course, I I'm here. I understand. Thank you. I understand you do a lot of charity work. Can you tell me a little bit about that? <laughs> you know about it because I told you in the email. No, <laughs> I've uh, I've always understood listening to the great neo philosophers through the years. I've always understood that if you're lucky enough to be financially fixed up, shall I say? You know, you've got a good position. Doesn't matter whether you're in commerce or or whether you're on stage, as I am, or no matter what you do, if everything is coming to you really easy, then you should look after other people as much as you can. Now, I'm not in favour of just giving money willy nilly. Never believed in that ever. But giving service. And funny enough, Toastmasters is very good for giving service, as in being a club official and all that. I think it all came from AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, and I'm sure Ralph Smedley originally took a lot of his ideas from AA, your service. But that's, I think, and, and then the money, you can, yes, if you've got an awful lot of money, you can say, I'll buy you a hospital, I'll buy you an ambulance, I'll buy you an MRI machine. So that's my feelings. Is that enough? It is. What, what charity do you support? Uh, me? I, well, I've got my own, actually. Um, and then I've got, I've just been hugely awarded. I got the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service uh, in July. And we had a celebration Amazing. last night. Uh, two nights ago, we had a huge celebration. So I'm the patron of uh, Meditech. And we majorly, we, we, give, we do give MRI machines. And we, we were very, very big with the PPE stuff uh, during the, 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 the height of the pandemic. We supplied loads of hospitals. But we got a huge award. Fabulous. Thank you. Thanks for chatting to me, Deck. I was just looking for Rinku, but she's not there. Kavita. Hello. Hi. Kavita, your favourite saying you tell me is feel the fear and do it anyway. So you know I'm going to ask, can you tell me a time when you felt the fear, but you've done it anyway? To be honest, I think um, I feel the fear most days about something. And if I'm honest, sometimes to do with work, sometimes to do with other challenges. But I do ask myself, you know, on a scale of like one to ten, how, how much I'm feeling fear. I think it's recognising it. And every time I do, I rise to it. Because if I don't, I would probably freeze. <laughs> Not, it's, it's just knowing it's there. I think fear is part of life, unfortunately. It's, you know. It is. Does it get easier though each time? I think you get easier at, um, yeah, just overriding it. it. It doesn't mean a fear will ever go away. It's always there. I think you just get used to just putting it to one side and continuing with what, what you intended to do or what somebody asked you to do. So I just feel it's one of those things I'll come back to again and again, because I it's just their fear. Um, but it's normal, as far as I'm concerned. Feel the fear and do it anyway. I love that. Thanks, Kavita. Pamela. Hello. I see that you like racing. What, what sort of racing is that? I have gotten involved with a lot of running races. Well, not a lot, probably about four, oh, four running races before COVID hit and mostly ones in Texas. And I've just started doing triathlon races and I really enjoy the, the planning that it takes and the dedication and the focus. I find that it helps me with the rest of my life, just planning for that one day. Instead of saying, I'm going to do something in the future, I'm going to work on such and such. If I have that one day to focus, it's, it brings me a lot of clarity on how far and how much I have to do. So racing, I never really thought that would be something that I really, really liked, but I love the clarity I get from putting those goals out there for myself. And is it true about this runner's high as a couch potato? It's never happened to me. Does it really happen? I need to know. Yeah, I, I would like to know that too. I, when I have really long runs, 
I come home and I feel absolutely exhausted. And then once I eat, I feel really, really good. So I think what, what they talk about the runner's high, I'm not sure I get that euphoric feeling. I mostly get the relaxation, the, the, the running, and then just the absolute re relaxation. And it helps me sleep. I can tell when I, I'm not, I haven't run up to my usual capacity because the relaxation is more of a issue for me than the runner's high. I would like to experience that runner's high every time. I think sometimes I do feel it when I feel really happy when I'm done, but I feel that relax, that deep relaxation more than anything. Uh, thank you, Pamela. I won't rush out and go for a run then. Andrew, I see that you like good old fashioned board games. I do. What do you like to play and are you competitive? Well, the board games that I have are really, really old fashioned pub games. So I have a fantastic table skittles set that you're welcome to come and join in playing one day if you're coming down here, Pam. Table Fabulous. skittles is absolutely great. I've got a pinball game, really good old fashioned pinball game. Everything that's old fashioned board games, dominoes, checkers as well, all of those sorts of things. I love those sorts of things that you find in pubs, pub time pursuits that get people together around a table and having a lot of fun. I love the sound of that. Or you could bring it up to Manchester when you next come. Sounds like more <laughs> my type of activity. I'll, I'll go for the high on that rather than the runner's high. If I bring them all to Manchester, it'll make quite a journey, you know, with all the <laughs> transport them all, because I've got you quite a big collection. Those, you supply I those, one a year. I'll find the pub. <laughs> I have one game a year to my collection. Always. Brilliant. So I've got Love a it. pile of them now. But there you Fab. Are. Thanks, Andrew. And Ma. A dancer, do you like dancing? What sort of dancing do you like? Well, I have to say that even if I'm Spanish, I'm not a flamenco dancer, okay? So <laughs> I'm more into <laughs> salsa dancing. And curiously enough, I learned to dance salsa in Birmingham. Yeah, in England. So you heard that right. <laughs> and yeah, and I had the opportunity to live in Colombia. When I got, I got there, it was like, yeah. So do you have a Colombian blood? And it was like, no, or maybe, who knows? But yeah, I do really love salsa. Sounds fabulous. So I think if we all get together, we could have a great night, couldn't we? All these different skills that we've got. Yeah. Anyone that's fearful, Kavita, Kavita can sort them down. Pamela can chase us around. We can play the games. We can dance. We can have a great time. <laughs> Fab. Have we got Rinku or is, have we lost Rinku? Ah, Rinku. Sorry, I thought Hi, I'd Pam. lost you. I see Hello, that you everyone. like reading. I see you like reading. What do you like to read? Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, right now, I'm reading this Decoding of Communication. It's written by our district director, Mansur Moitin, District 116. He just gifted it to me yesterday, and I started reading it. A good question, though. It was handy. Yes, uh, I love reading, and this is I have started reading from today uh, to distress, you know, that's contest. Yeah, so and the last book I read, uh, The Monk Who Has Sold His Ferrari by Robin Sharma, it was a fantastic book, it's eye opening book. Yes, and I keep on reading anything I get um, handy, I just keep on reading them. Thank you for I asking. A lot of us Toastmasters seem to like reading, don't we? We could have a spin off to a book club pair, I think. Fabulous yeah. few thumbs up going there. So I see the judges are coming back in the room, so I think they're ready to, for us. So I'm just going to thank all the contestants for taking part, and I'm going to hand you back to our Toastmaster of the day, Alina. Thank you. Before Alina comes on, sorry, Alina, go ahead. Uh, just club notices. Thank you. Yes, I was just going to give the word to Nick for the club notices. Go ahead, Nick. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody here today. Uh, wonderful turnout. Thank you for all the visitors who came and thank you for all our friends who came and helped out at our contest today. One thing to remember is this club has been chartered for just, well, seven months, I believe it is. And we are going to have a fantastic charter party in two weeks time today. We're going to have not last year's international president, not this year's international president, everybody knows who they are. 
We're going to have next year's international president, Matt Kinsey, superstar in the room. We've got the team led by Rinku and everybody else working in the background to make this a fabulous event. And I want you all to be there. Those of you who are members, contribute to it. Those of you who are guests, come along, have some fun. We're going to have lots of pop stars, lots of rock stars, lots of Toastmaster stars, and also more than anything, we, you are going to be the star as well. So let me just tell you one thing. Those of you who are visitors here, digital communicators, we do what we say on the tin. We look at the digital elements. We look at the communication. And we want to push further and become better in many aspects. Come to a regular meeting. Talk to us and find out. After the meeting today, uh, we're going to have an after party. Feel free to stay and chat. Over to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you so much, Nick. Indeed, uh, quite exciting couple of weeks ahead of us. So I hope you are all able to join it. And I know that you're all waiting for, of course, the results from this competition. So I'd like to call out our chief judge, Mehul, that will share with us what the results are. Please. You are muted? Yeah, I was mute. <laughs> Great. Great evening, uh, seeing actually people from around the world, wonderful performances. And you know what? We were we just missed the tie breaking uh, uh, judge. It was it was in one contest. We were just away by one point. So uh, I never used the tie breaking judge, but I think I had to do today. <laughs> but no, we have a clear result. So we start with uh, so all we are already. And maybe we can all open the mic as well if you want to. I don't think that there is any issue. We can also have the drum rolls. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> so for the humorous pitch contest, the third place goes to Dak. Congratulations, Dak. Dak Kluski. Second place for the humorous speech contest goes to Rinku, Rinku Saha. Congratulations, Rinku. And the first place goes to Kavita, Kavita Dulai. Congratulations. Congratulations to all three of you. Well done, everybody. Very well done. Very well done. Now we go for the table topics. Actually, it is fantastic job. I mean, I was I was really impressed. I was thinking that the all the judges would have a really no, tough time to was third. I don't know. Uh, the good good result. They did fantastic job. Third place of the table topics goes to Dak. Dak, congratulations, Dak Kluski. Kluski, sorry. Dak. Then the second place, second place for the table topics goes to Mar. Mar, congratulations, Mar. And the first place, of the table topics competition goes to Andrew. Andrew, congratulations. Very well done. Everybody did so good. And in Tiba, we had really very, very close contest con uh, competition today. Thanks. Thanks, everyone, for the fantastic show. Well done, everybody. Over to the Toastmasters. Yes, thank you so much, Michal. And congratulations one more time to everybody. You did amazing. And uh, for some of you uh, winners, I will expect and visit for dinner, especially the uh, winner of the humorist uh, account. But now let's uh, welcome again our uh, uh, chair tonight, who will talk with the winners. Pam Rowley, everyone. Thank you, Alina. So, Kavita, how do you feel? Happy. <laughs> you should be. I feel hungry after listening to your speech, but tell me how you feel. I'm feeling hungry too, because I haven't eaten. <laughs> me neither. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, thank you. I think the, the whole contest, the standard was really, really high. 
for saying it's the first level, the first layer of the contest, um, really high. Everybody was so good. So I, I thought it was really tough being a, a judge today in both I contests, it, actually. It was, yeah. it sure was. So you did really, really well. How did you prepare? How did, is this a feel the fear and do it anyway moment? Uh, yeah, well, it was a, the thing was, I'm always writing speeches about my dad because my dad is a really inspirational man. I'd never written anything about my mum. And all I remembered were her, all those stories are true, by the way. There's nothing made up. At the time, it was all very serious, but now I can laugh. Um, so the original speech was written in 2014. So it's something I just revamped up for this contest. Fabulous. Uh, wasn't it? Well, well done and good luck for the area. Thank you. And Andrew, how are you feeling? Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you very much, everybody. It was great fun. We decided amongst the contestants that we were going to have this like a party tonight, this contest. <laughs> so it's got a really nice atmosphere in the contestant room. It was a great atmosphere in the contestants room. So give us an insight. How do you prepare and produce a speech like that? It almost felt like it was prepared. What's the secret? Ooh, you just need to practice. Now, that seems easy to say. But I think that with table topics, the more you practice, the more you try out topics, the better you get to producing something that's got real flow to it and has a story and the more engaged you get also. I think that makes a big difference. But I know that I always try and I warm up on contest days for table topics, always. Maybe it may only be 10 minutes worth, but I sit down with my timer on my phone and some topics and I do the ones that I don't like the look of as well. <laughs> so that I don't get stuck because Pam you could give me a topic and I might know nothing about it and what am I going to say so I always try and do practice with ones that I don't know or that you know, don't appeal to me just in case so I don't get stuck that's great advice I like the sound of that and it just shows that preparation certainly is the key so well done and good luck for the area contest so that concludes our humorous speech and table topics contest I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've been inspired by our contestants. In a minute, I'm going to hand you back to our president. But before I do, I want to thank everyone who made this contest possible. Of course, this wouldn't have taken place without our contestants, so thank you to them. Our Toastmaster of the Day, Alina Seracy Mover. Our Chief Judge, Mehul. All our other judges. Our Zoom Masters, Audrey Singfat and Nick McCarney. Our timers, Hilary Thorne and Garode Murphy. Our counters, Philip Gones and Nick McCarney. And before I hand over to Nick, I want to say a special big thank you to him as the backbone of this club. He's our guiding light and our inspiration. Over to you, our president, Nick Lacani. Thank you very much, Pam and Thank you to everybody. What I'd like to do is to just uh, have a, a one minute to recognize uh, everybody that you had, and also somebody behind the scenes who's been working hard. She's, she became VPE since July. So Colette Ainsco, she's done fabulously well. When I came back from holiday, she'd already done most of the work for me. And I'll just give her a big round of applause. I know she's watching on the video. She's somewhere on a beach, somewhere in Europe. But uh, thank you, Colette, fabulous work. And also everybody in the room, everybody who's helped with this. Thank you. What I'd like to do is just call on to see if we've had one or two guests in the room. Tell us what you thought. Tell us what your takeaways are from today's contest. Let's go with Nikki. Nikki, are you there? Hello. Yes, I'm here. I've really enjoyed ah. this evening. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for persevering with us. We had a couple of technical issues in the background, but you uh, persevered and I'm glad you enjoyed it. So give, tell us um, a little bit about yourself. Which clubs do you belong to? Or are you a Toastmaster? And give us one takeaway from the contest today. So I joined Toastmasters just short of a year ago and I'm a member of Hall Speakers. And they've recently gone back to in-person meetings, which I can't get to because I'm a wheelchair user and have a health condition. It means I can't make it. So uh, one of the members uh, was trying to help me out and trying to help me find an online only club and recommended that I come and see you guys and see how you do things. So it's been really interesting to see you on a contest night because I imagine 
I only saw one contest at Hall Speakers, but it was very different to their regular, regular uh, meetings. So from tonight, I think I just take away that it's it's just fun to be in Toastmasters no matter where you go. And I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Appreciate your time and uh, say hello to everybody in Hull. Thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, do we have, uh, I'm just looking at the list. Uh, we have Arnold. Arnold, uh, uh, Arnold is in the room. Arnold is actually uh, not only from Area 48, which is where we are in Manchester, but also he is the new uh, public relations manager for the district. Arnold, what are your takeaways today? Well, Nick, uh, an amazing, well, I also want to say amazing team, amazing work, um, great speakers, and uh, well, a great, what, what has been set up in, in, in was it eight months? Um, I've, I really enjoyed it um, and see how uh, well everybody have done it. So uh, absolutely, well, I, I know that you, you said a party, so um, I hope, I hope I will get an invitation. <laughs> yes, in fact, we are going to invite everybody from the, the district leadership team. And we, we've kind of like been doing it in the background quietly. And as of tomorrow, we're going to be celebrating our charter party two weeks tonight. It's going to happen 6 p.m. London, Dublin time. We're going to start. So be there. Or... <laughs> well, I want, to, I want to say an amazing Nick and, of course, an amazing job with your team. Great, great uh, Great, great uh, competition today. Thank you, Arnold. Just, just tell us one thing from the contest that you'll take away with you uh, to any other club. Just take what one thing that you take away from the contest today. Well, I have, I have to say that um, as, as, as a takeaway is f for me. Well, let's say I, I'm just going to go for for a personal personal approach. It, it was really um, organized. It uh, was really. Let's say uh, within like like time frame, of course, maybe a couple of minutes later. But I, want, I just want to say that the speakers are so potential, and 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 yeah, I just I just love to see how, especially when a competition, how you can grow and how you can go to the next level with it. Oh, thank you very much, Arnold. Let's say hello to uh, Toby. Are you there, Toby? Or maybe he's dropped off. Okay, uh, Michelle. Michelle, are you there? Hi, Nick. Hi. What's your takeaway from today? You're from Manchester Communicators, obviously, our sister club. What's your takeaway from today's contest? My takeaway from the contest today, it was very energetic. I think all of the speakers, humorous speeches as well as table topic speeches, had so much energy in the, in how they pre uh, presented their speeches. And it was really nice to see it, really nice to view. And I found that the topics are quite varied as well. So I, I feel like I got or not from it. Brilliant, brilliant. So thank you very much for coming today. Really appreciate it. Now, if I just uh, point to everybody to the fact that, yes, we were maybe a few minutes late, but what we did was we caught up on time. We got, this, we got everything working uh, behind the scenes very well. And thank you again to all the helpers behind the scenes. And we finished ahead of time. Well done. Now, today we're going to finish at 8.15. Well, it's 8.14. I declare the meeting closed and the after party to begin. Stop the recording, somebody. Thank you.